creditor, what's his interest? Solvency. He wants solvency, which is what? More money. See that? The two different disparate interests that we have. And that happens in governments all the time. But you need to know who the principal users of government financial statements are. So we talk about taxpayers, regulatory agencies, uh, legislative bodies, creditors, right? Uh, credit rating agencies. These are all the folks that are interested in looking at those statements themselves. Now, let's take a look at the government-wide statements themselves. So basically, these government-wide statements are prepared. You know why they use the word government-wide? It's like consolidated statements for the entire government. And you say, what does that mean? Entire government? All right, let me give you an example. New Jersey. What does New Jersey have? Well, we have New Jersey state government, which is, you know, run, is involved in many different things. Rutgers University. Is that part of the state of New Jersey? Yes. It's a component unit of the state of New Jersey. Why? Because Rutgers gets quite a bit of money from the state of New Jersey, right? How about New Jersey Transit? Yes, and that's called a business type of activity operated by the state. So what you find is that when we talk about government-wide statements, they cover the entire spectrum of the state of New Jersey. And let me give you a quick introduction to two types of things that happen in government. One is obviously the government which runs the day-to-day -day function. The other one is, I said New Jersey Transit, right? Yes. What does New Jersey Transit always want to do? Make sure that it charges the proper fares, right? To people, so it recovers its costs, right? That is known as a business type activity. For instance, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, when they run the airports, that's a business activity. Why? Because the purpose is to cover the cost that you incurred with the revenues that you receive. Okay? So again, government-wide statements are cover the full spectrum. And the word is operational accountability. I don't want you to forget that, which is whether the government has used its resources efficiently and effectively in meeting service objectives because there is another type of accountability which we'll come to. Okay, and I'll, then I'll describe to you again the difference between the two. Okay, so there are four things that I want you to never forget from this point on. First, accrual basis for government-wide statements. Full accrual, we all know that, right? Second, flow of economic resources. And you say, what does he mean by flow of economic resources? I'll give you an example. Governments operate very much like you and I do with a checkbook. Money comes in, gets deposited, money goes out. So for example, governments, is depreciation a cash expense? Is depreciation on equipment, does it involve any cash? No. So do governments recognize depreciation? No. Does it involve cash? No. But flow of economic resources is just the way the corporate world works. If you incur an expense, whether it's depreciation or amortization, even if it does not involve cash, you recognize the expense. But as 